And I want to tell you a specific story from uh, Tokyo 2020, which explains one of the deep principles about getting this right. Now, uh, it's, it's hard, looking back at the beginning of the Tokyo 2020 bid, to remember now that the bid would never have happened except for one man. And that man was Ishihara-san. He doesn't get a lot of credit for that now, and I believe that he deserves a lot more credit. Uh, and when the bid began, of course he was still governor, and I went to have a conversation with him. And I said, okay, so let's discuss the mood that you want this bid to have. And he said, okay, I know the mood, and the mood is one word, and the mood is shining. That's not a particularly original word. You know, plenty of people want to shine. We all would like to shine. But it was a very important word for the project. So I could turn a camera at any moment onto any member of Tokyo 2020 team, film them, play it back. Let's take a look at that together, Inose-san. Let's take a look at that together, Abe-san, Takeda-san, Christel Takigawa. Let's take a look at it. Are you shining? Now, what's interesting is there is always a gap. A gap between how you want people to see you and how you actually come across. I'll tell you a very uh, strong, dramatic example of this gap in business. I'm sure you know Vodafone as a business. I know it did not have a very happy time in, in Japan, but it's had a very happy time in other parts of the world. And the current chief executive is an Italian called Vittorio Calau. And Vittorio, besides being the chief executive of a business which has 150 million customers in over 100 countries with over 100,000 employees, is also a keen cyclist. Semi-pro, actually. And every year, if he has time, he tries to do, he tries to take part in a race. And it's a, it's a, it's a race in the Italian Dolomites. Well, about four years ago, he was doing this race. And because he's quite a big character in Japan, quite famous, there was a TV crew following him. Uh, Last day, he'd done, a, he'd done a good time. He was, he was really, he was ecstatic. There was a TV camera in his face. He jumped off his bike. He had done the best time of his life. He said, I felt like Superman. I felt like I was 21. I felt I could rule the world. I jumped off my bike. I gave this interview. And I, 100%, I nailed it. And then later... This is the way he tells the story to me. Later, I was uh, in, my, in my hotel room and I had a couple of physiotherapists <laughs> helping me recover. And I got a text from a friend saying, Vittorio, check out this YouTube link. I clicked. And there was the interview, of course, already up there on YouTube. And he said, I, I looked at myself and I saw this this guy was old. He was tired. He was gray. He was an accountant. And I thought about the gap between this Superman in my head, this 21-year-old, this, 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 this man who could rule the world, and this old, gray, tired, sad So he picked up the phone and he said, Martin, we better do some work together <laughs> because of the gap, the gap, the gap, the gap. And that gap is there for all of us. And sometimes it's less dramatic than, um, than, uh, 
than in Vittorio's case. But we all have that gap. So if you're trying to get into the world of business, right. yeah, imagine that um, I'm interviewing you. Right. you know, I've, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I've got, you know, I can't remember what my business is. Um, so, so, so I have a very, very important business, believe me. All right. yeah. And, um, uh, and so. you come to me as a candidate. Great. And um, after that interview, I'll be thinking about you. Yeah? That's nice. And I'll be, I'll mainly probably be thinking, what kind of a guy was Salami? For a start, he's got a good name, so I'll remember <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm not going to forget that name in a hurry. <laughs> but but, but what, what would you want me to be thinking about you? My energy. That's one thing. Um, just to have that mental image of me just moving my hands around. <laughs> moving your hands around, how? Just because you could look a bit crazy, <laughs> couldn't you? <laughs> like in a sitsan. I guess it's just just having that mental image of my energy, you know, the passion. Yeah, that's that's what you'd want. That's why. Anything like. else? I'm not saying there should be anything else. Right. Just well, that I answer the questions correctly too. Okay. Right. Good. Cool. Okay. So, thank you very much, Salami. Now, what we're going to do is take a quick look at Salami, and um, uh, we're going to. Ask ourselves two questions. I'm going to play this back without volume. We're not interested in what he's saying, to be honest. Remember, ambiguity, Moravian rule, you know, 93% other stuff, 7% words, 7% words, 93% other stuff. So let's look at the other stuff, particularly the visual. And uh, I want to ask two questions here. The first is a question that only Salami can answer, which is, are there any surprises? He looks at himself, and does he, does he think, that's exactly the way I think I am? Or do, you, or do you look at yourself, do you look at yourself and see any surprises? Because this is, this is about self-knowledge. Personal impact starts with self-knowledge. And these handy little devices are a very, very good way to get self-knowledge. may sound superficial, but believe me. But the other question, which we can all try to answer, is can we describe what sort of a person we're looking at? Calm, excited, cold, warm. Professional, unprofessional. What kind of a person are we looking at? If we had to see this and then go away and we said, oh yeah, I saw this guy Salami today. He seemed like a very what kind of person? Come and look at this as well. So any surprises for you? That's the first question. Surprises for Salami. So <laughs> I left my mouth wide open and uh, my tongue stuck out at one point. And that's a surprise as well. You also my do, facial expressions. You do this a bit. Right. Mm. Yeah. Looks a bit nervous. You, you've got energy, but you're quite kind of... A little kind of, yeah, a little bit all over the place. Right. Now, could we describe what kind of a person we're looking at? Anyone want to just give me an adjective? Sorry, cheerful, nice, warm, cheerful, kind, shy. Sorry, little nervous. 
Okay, so those are some first reactions. Nice, kind, warm, shy, a little nervous. What was this man trying to give us? He was trying to give us energy and passion. And we get warm, shy, friendly, a little nervous. It's a gap. It's a gap. And it's a gap that he can work on. And he can work on it starting with his body. Because he needs to be a little bit less, yeah, and a bit stronger in his body. The energy is there, but it's like restless energy. Yeah? It's like a football player energy. It needs to be more focused. This is the kind of thing we can begin to work on. Then we begin to work on the voice, and then we begin to work on the words.